Hey there, uh, we're going to go over the Six Kingdoms. I introduced it a little bit in the last set of notes under classification, so I just want to kind of go over that again and also to go through the different phyla found in the animal kingdom. So this is the Six Kingdom system, taking into account that bacteria have been split into two chunks. All right, so first one, you bacteria. Now you probably don't have to write this because you probably have this written down already in the previous set of notes. Uh, but just compare, see if there's anything new and additional I might have added to this to add to the previous notes. So kingdom eubacteria, or uh, just plain old bacteria sometimes, are made up of the prokaryotes, things without a nucleus. They can be autotrophs or heterotrophs, and they're always unicellular. Some examples of these are the ones that make you sick, like streptococcus, the ones that give you strep throat, spirilla, and diplobacilli. So these uh, names tell you a lot. The caucus part tells me it's round, like this guy here. The strepto means he's in a chain. The spirilla means he's spiral or corkscrew shaped. Diplo means they come in twos. And bacilli means it's shaped like a hot dog. So the names that they use to explain the bacteria are actually very descriptive. Here is Escherichia coli, another type of bacteria that you're familiar with. It's the one that is good in your large intestine, very bad in your small intestine because it, um, yeah, gives you food poisoning and all that yucky stuff. So basically they're poo bacteria. Now the other type of bacteria are the RK bacteria or archaea. They are also prokaryotes, also auto and heterotrophic, also unicellular. But remember, they're the ones that have the different cell wall chemical structure. Some examples of these you will never find living on or in your body are methanophiles. They're called that because they make methane. Methane is that combustible gas that comes out of your rear end. So it's pretty stinky where these guys live. Halophiles. Halo means salt, not the video game that you like to play. So here's a salt bed right here showing a whole bunch of halophiles, turn, halophiles turning the salt red. And then we have thermophiles thermo meaning heat, so these are guys that really love super hot environments such as these little pools created in Yellowstone where the water uh, is way above boiling. And each one creates its own specific temperature. So where the water is closer out to the edge, the water's cooler, so you get a different kind of bacteria that are orange as opposed to the bacteria in the middle where it's really hot, they are blue. So we get these cool rainbow colors. Now the next one, the protist, protista, these are eukaryotes, or uh, domain eukarya, and these ones are have a nucleus. They're auto or heterotrophic. They can be uni or multicellular. Some examples are things that you don't normally see because they're really teeny tiny, like an amoeba. So this little guy right here, that's an amoeba. Uh, paramecium, this guy right here. And plasmodium, uh, this guy right here. Euglena, which is this one down here diatomes, which are these cool looking structures right here, algae, like probably some of this right here, and slime molds, which I don't have a picture of, but they're really cool looking. Then we have the, wait, there we go, fungi. The fungi are eukaryotes, so they have a nucleus. They're heterotrophs, so they need to get their food from an outside source. They can be uni and multicellular, though most of them are multicellular, and their cell walls are made of chitin. Some examples, we have mushrooms, like all these little cutie guys over here. Yeast, like what we use to make beer and bread. Mold, like what grows on your old strawberries down here. Bird's nest fungus, which is really cool. It's a little cup, and uh, there's little white puff balls inside that look like bird's eggs. And then when you touch them, they go poof, and all the spores go flying. Even athlete's foot, ew or ringworm, ew, things that grow in your body can also be a fungus. And then lichens, remember, are a fungus-algae hybrid, and so those would also be considered part of the fungus kingdom. And then we have our plants. Plants are eukaryotes, they have a nucleus, always multicellular, always autotrophic, except for the exception of a few parasitic plants that rely on other uh, plants to suck their nutrition off of and their cell walls have cellulose. Examples, we have the cone-bearing plants. These are the most ancient of plants, like this guy down here, um, and the, like pine cones. Ferns, like this one down here. Mosses, like this one right here, and this one, and flowering plants, like this guy right up here. This one right here is called ginkgo biloba. This one's been around since dinosaurs have been here, so a long time. 
And then we have the animal groups. And so it says kingdom. Uh, I should have put, I'm sorry, I should have put uh, animalia like that. Eh, animalia. And so these guys are eukaryotes. They're multicellular. They're also heterotrophic. And there's a lot of different phyla in there. So it's kind of hard to just to say, oh, animals. So we're actually going to look at the different groups. This right here is a phylogenetic tree. What that does, it kind of shows who's related to who. So if you can pretend that we all started from some, you know, basic thing that we all sprouted from, you can kind of see how and when we came from. So over here we have the sponges are the first ones to have sprouted out and kind of became their own thing. And then after this over here we got the jellyfish and such. And then it just kind of keeps on going until we have the mammals right here, which are the most complex and the most recent of the animal groups. So let's take a look at the different animal phyla. So Animalia is the kingdom. These are the phyla. The phyla periphera are the sponges. Periphera means the bearer of many holes. And as you can see by your common kitchen sponge, which is not an animal, by the way, that has lots of holes in it. Also, SpongeBob, not a real animal. But this sponge, this sponge, and this sponge are real animals, even though they look nothing like what you would consider an animal to be. Then we have the next group up, the Nidarians, or Nidaria. You don't say the C in front. This includes things like jellyfish, hydra, sea anemones, and coral. So here's some. You're probably familiar with all these guys looking like jellyfish, but if you notice, this guy who we call a jellyfish is not related to the typical jellies like these. He's in his own little group. And then we have the feather duster type things, anemones and coral, uh, called anthozoa. And then we've got these cool little guys called hydra from hydrozoa. And uh, he's got a little mouth in the middle, and these are his tentacles, and he eats teeny tiny food, puts it in his tummy. Although if you get a whole bunch of them together, they can make this lovely thing called a Portuguese man of war, which is actually a collection of hydra, and they make this big bubble, like a, kind of like a hot air balloon, to carry them around the ocean. Next one, we have platyhelminthes. Platy means flat. Helminth means worm. Flat worm. So all these guys are, you guessed it, flat. So we have things called turbellarians, like this cutie guy right here, because it kind of looks like he's got a cross-eyed. Um, we have flatworms, like um, this guy over here. We've got flukes, like this guy right here. And don't forget about tapeworms, like this guy over here. So some of them, these are all the parasitic ones, kind of gross, but some of them really, really pretty, the ones that live in the ocean. Next we have nematoda. Or, in, according to our worksheet we'll be doing, Ashelminthes, uh, which has to do, there's that helminth word again, meaning worm. These are the round worms, and there's some other animals that don't quite fit under Nematoda, but they do fit under Ashelminthes. So round worms like this, but they don't have any segments like an earthworm does. So round worms, trichinosis worms, um, trichinosis is a disease you can get by eating undercooked pork. Filarial worms, like this lovely thing crawling through his eyeball at the moment. Blech. Rotifers, little teeny tiny cute creatures that live in uh, pond water and in the soil. Ascaris worms, like this guy right here. And then hook worms, which uh, your dogs and cats get that a lot. Okay, next one is Annelida. These are the segmented worms. Oh, I'm sorry. I should have put segmented right there. So fix that. Turn that into segmented and but they are round so but they're not round worms they're segmented round worms uh, this includes things like your earthworms so let's see where oh there's no earthworm in here how weird leeches like this guy right here polychaetes whoops that's an e and then an s polychaetes like this lovely thing right here and things like sandworms and this is the head of one right here they're pretty gnarly they can actually bite a hole right through your finger Ugh. next up is mollusca or the mollusks. These include things like snails, slugs, clams, things with two shells like oysters, octopuses or octopi, and squid. So here's a picture of some over here, different seashells. This thing is called a chitin, and uh, that's a one we don't see very often. Here's a nautilus. He's kind of cool. Here's a uh, squid right there. So these are all different types of mollusks. Then we have arthropoda, or the arthropods. These are things that go crunch when you step on them because they have an outer shell. So all your crustaceans, crunchy things that live in the ocean, spiders, even horseshoe crabs, um, scorpions, centipedes, millipedes. Dear Lord, I can't type. That's an E and an S. Millipedes. 
and then of course all the different variety of insects. Remember, arthropods make up the biggest category of all the animals living on Earth, 61%. So here's a butterfly, here's a centipede, a scorpion, a, a crab, some ancient creature that used to live on the bottom of the ocean, and don't forget trilobites. And then the last one is echinoderms. And actually, second to last, echinoderms, or echinodermata, is the name of that particular phylum. This includes all these cool-looking creatures, like sea urchins, like this one here. Sand dollars, like, uh, oh, they don't have one in here, bummer. Brittle stars, this guy up here. Sea cucumbers, this big fat thing, looks like a pickle. Sea stars, right there, and sea lilies, which are kind of like right over here, called feather stars. And then the last group are the chordates, or chordata. And this includes what we typically think of as animals, your fish, amphibians, reptiles, birds, and, mam and mammals. And so even though this is phylum chordata, what goes underneath the phylum, kingdom phylum class, the class would be the fish, the amphibians, the reptiles, and so. So um, in a couple of weeks or so, we'll be spending a whole bunch of time on chordates and learning all about the different kinds. All right. Talk to you all tomorrow. Bye-bye.